In this video, I'll reveal nine large cap UK companies which have powerful economic moats. These companies have an enduring competitive advantage and tend to thrive over the long term. Having an economic moat means they are virtual monopolies and it's very difficult for new market entrants to challenge them. Just a reminder, this is not investment advice and is just for entertainment purposes only. Our first company is AstraZeneca, which was founded in 1999 from a merger between the Swedish company Astra and the British company Zeneca, which itself was created from the British chemicals giant ICI. AstraZeneca is a global pharmaceutical and biotechnology company and makes products which treat a wide range of illnesses. It is Britain's largest listed company by capitalisation. The share price has increased by 93% over the last five years. It pays a dividend of 2.2% and as you can see here, AstraZeneca has a great track record of growing the dividend year after year. Also in the same sector is another pharmaceutical giant, GSK. This company was established in the year 2000, when Glaxo Welcome and SmithKline Beecham merged. These two companies have their origins in the 19th century. In 2022, GSK was the 10th largest pharmaceutical company in the world. Last year, GSK demerged its consumer healthcare business, which is now listed separately on the UK stock exchange as Halion. The share price is down 7% over the last five years, but a major reason for this fall was of course the demerger and shareholders would have been compensated by now owning some Halion shares. The dividend yield is 5.1% spread over four payments a year. So both GSK and AstraZeneca have large economic moats. They own strong patents, have economies of scale in drug production and development, along with powerful distribution networks. Next up is the British consumer goods giant Unilever. Its products are bought in 190 countries. It owns over 400 brands. Two and a half billion consumers around the world use its products daily. In 2017, the legendary investor Warren Buffett, who just loves companies with economic moats, liked Unilever so much that he attempted to buy the whole company as part of the Kraft Heinz takeover bid, which was ultimately unsuccessful. Unilever is the fourth largest listed UK company. It pays a 3.7% dividend yield spread over four payments a year, and it has a great track record of dividend growth. Let's now take a look at the significance of a company which grows its dividend. If we go back to the year 2006, Unilever shares were £12.16 each. The dividend was 51 pence a share, giving a yield of 4.2%. Today, the shares are £40.36. The dividend per share is £1.48, giving a yield of 3.7%. But here is the magical thing. If you had bought Unilever shares in 2006 and just kept them, you would be now receiving a dividend yield of 12.2% a year on your original amount invested. And this is highly likely to keep on rising. So holding shares which increase their dividends can be extremely rewarding over the long term. Next up is the British multinational beverage company Diageo. Its distilleries produce 40% of all Scottish whisky and it operates in over 180 countries. Guinness is now Britain's best-selling draft beer. The share price is up 19% over the last five years. The yield is 2.5% and Diageo has a great record of growing its dividend. Our fifth company is the British multinational consumer goods giant Reckitt Benckiser. It produces health hygiene and nutrition products. Brands include Dettol, Strepsils and Harpic. These are strong brands which consumers trust and will continue to buy regardless of inflation or the state of the economy. Reckitt is up 13% over the last five years. It pays a 3.3% dividend yield. The dividends have been growing nicely over recent years. Next on the list is British American Tobacco and as of 2021, it was the largest tobacco company in the world based on net sales. Founded in 1902, it's over 120 years old. It has operations in over 180 countries. Its brands, cost advantage and regulations on advertising make it virtually impossible for new entrants to challenge it. Despite all this, it is making products which are falling out of favour and the shares are down a staggering 29% over the last five years. 
The yield is high at 8.9% and the dividends have an excellent track record, but that fall in the share price is concerning. Next is London Stock Exchange Group. This UK-based stock exchange and financial information company was founded in 1801. It was the most valued stock exchange in Europe until 2022, when it was overtaken by the Paris Stock Exchange. The share price is up 68% over the last five years. The dividend yield is 1.3% spread over two payments a year. And just look at that dividend growth. Very impressive indeed. I might consider adding this one to my own portfolio. A 1.3% yield might not seem much, but as I mentioned earlier, if you own shares in companies which grow their dividends and you hold them for the long term, your dividend yield on the original amount invested could now be into double figures. In 2006, the shares were £10.30 each, with a dividend of 17 pence per share, giving you a yield at the time of 1.6%. Today, the shares are £80.70 and pay a dividend of £1.07 a share, giving a yield of 1.3%. But any amount you had invested all those years ago in 2006 would now be earning you 10.4% a year in dividends. Another example of the awesome power of companies which grow their dividends. Next up is the British multinational armed security and aerospace company BAE Systems. It's actually the biggest manufacturer in Britain and the largest defence contractor in Europe. Switching costs, intangibles including technology and a close relationship with defence ministries means that this company has huge barriers to entry and therefore a powerful economic moat. The share price is up 64% over the last five years. It pays a 2.7% yield, but grows the dividend year after year. And finally, we have a multinational data analytics and consumer credit reporting company. Its name is Experian, and it has data on over 1 billion people and businesses. This huge database makes it extremely difficult for any new business trying to collect and amass this information. The share price is up. 43% over the last five years. It pays a 1.6% yield, spread over two payments a year. And here is the list again of nine FTSE 100 companies with economic moats. The average five-year price increase of these nine companies is 29% and the current dividend yield is 3.5%. The FTSE 100 is up only 2% in this time and the yield is fairly similar at 3.8%. If Warren Buffett was on the lookout for some UK companies, then I think he might consider some of these. If you found this video useful, then please hit that like button and consider subscribing for more updates. Until next time, happy investing.